Hello guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel, The Double Rule. In this video, we are going to prepare a statement of cash flow using the indirect method. Ang magiging focus lang natin is yung um, cash flow from operating activity. Kasi yung pinagkaiba ng uh, direct sa indirect method, yun lang naman yun eh, sa operating. Yung cash flow from financing and then cash flow from investing the procedures are the same mapa direct man yan o indirect method and uh, bago tayo mag proceed dito sa cash flow statement ano ba yung mga guidelines or rules na susundin natin in order to uh, efficiently prepare the cash flow statement using this method we will uh, start with the net income kaya sya tinawag na indirect we are deriving the cash balance from the net income Itong mga item sa baba niya, so these are the adjustments that we have to make. Nangunguna-nguna dyan yung depreciation. Depreciation kasi is usually the non-cash expense na ina-add back sa mga problem. Concept behind that is that yung expense, minus natin siya sa income statement. But since ang hinahanap natin is cash balance, kailangan mo siyang ibalik, i-add back. Yung mga cash expenses, okay na yun, hindi na natin na concern yun. So yung non-cash expense, i-add back mo. So therefore, lahat ng income item, lahat ng expense item na walang cash flow, yun yung i-adjust mo. Since we are uh, dealing with the cash flow from operation section, di ba to reiterate, we have discussed in a prior video that uh, yung accounts na affected dito sa section na ito is only the current asset as well as the current liability account. So yung mga changes in these accounts, Yun lang yung pagtutuunan natin ng pansin. First, we have the change in the current asset. So after observing ano ba yung nangyari dun sa current asset, yung magiging treatment mo sa cash flow statement is baliktad. Kaya nakalagay dito is inverse. Baliktad rin natin. So if napansin mo na yung current asset sa balance sheet tumaas, ang gawin mo sa cash flow statement, i-minus mo. So kaya nakalagay dyan, increase in current asset, we have to deduct. Meanwhile, if napansin mo bumaba yung current asset, nag-negative yung change. Ang gawin mo sa cash flow statement is i-add mo siya pabalik sa net income. So yun lang yung basic rule natin if it is current asset, baliktad. And then meanwhile, paano naman pag current liability? As you can see, kabaliktaran talaga siya ng current asset. So pagka current liability, um, the treatment is direct. Pagka napansin mo na ang liability is tumaas, ang gagawin mo sa cash flow statement is uh, idaragdag mo din siya. So simply add it. Kung bumaba naman yung current liability, ang gawin mo, ibawas mo rin sa cash flow statement. So yun, ganun lang kasimple yung uh, rules natin under the indirect method. So let's uh, jump into the uh, data and the cash flow statement. Of course, ang starting point natin is the net income. We simply have to reference dun sa income statement. So, ang net income natin is $1,000. Now that we have our starting point, we can now uh, do our first adjustment, which is to add back the depreciation, non-cash expense. This is also derived from the income statement. at 15,000. So i-add ba ko lang ano since non-cash nga siya ibalik natin i minus yan eh. So add. So now that we have um these first two items, we can now proceed with the balance sheet analysis. First, i-filter natin ano ba yung mga kailangan nating accounts. Specifically, current asset as well as your current liability. So dun sa current asset, syempre hindi kasama yung cash kasi Yung cash ngayon ng compute natin. So, hindi pwedeng iguluhin natin yung computation. Kinocompute mo yung cash pero tapos isasama mo yung cash sa computation. So, nag-inception siya. So, hindi yung kasama. Yung uh, other current asset lang. Specifically, yung accounts receivable, of course, kasama yan. Prepaid insurance is also current asset as well as the inventory. So, ito lang yung mga adjusting items natin.
Yan, and then let's proceed with the current liability. So accounts payable, that is current liability. And then wages payable also kasama yan. Notes payable is also current liability. So now that we have filtered yung mga uh, relevant account, we can now perform uh, the increase or decrease analysis by simply comparing the balance this year versus the balance last year para makuha mo kung tumaas ba yung account or bumaba. So ito i-ano ko na lang yung formula. Yan para, so ganun lang naman, pinag-minus lang yung 2020 balance dun sa 2019. Para makuha mo, tumaas ba siya or bumaba. We are also going to do or to copy. Copy ko na lang yung formula dito sa tatlo sa liability. So based from our analysis, napansin natin na ang accounts receivable is uh, bumaba na 7,500. So, uh, to reiterate, ang gagawin natin is babalik ta rin lang natin yung uh, naging change. Since this is decrease, current asset, balik ta rin mo, gawin mo, i-add mo siya sa cash flow statement. Magiging positive siya, 7.5. And then, yun naman prepaid insurance, same lang din yung nangyari sa kanya. Nag-decrease siya by 2,000, so we have to reverse the effect. So, i-add mo siya, 2,000. Meanwhile, yung inventory. So, tumaas naman yung uh, inventory natin by 3,000. So, we have to minus, i-deduct siya sa cash flow statement. So, yun. Tapos na tayo dun sa current asset part. We can now proceed with the current liabilities. First, you have the accounts payable. Tumaas siya by 2,000. Yung changes sa current liability is direct. Idadagdag mo lang din siya sa cash flow statement. And then, decrease sa wages payable. Since bumaba siya, remember na ang changes sa current liability, the effect on the cash flow statement is direct. So, kailangan mo lang din siyang minus ng 3,000. And then, yung last item, note payable. The note payable is actually hindi siya kasama. Kasi yung note payable is dapat dun siya papatak sa financing section of the cash flow statement. Because pag nag tayo ng note payable, the goal is to finance the company's project. And therefore, dapat sa financing section siya. Ang dapat na pumasok sa operating section is not the notes payable but yung interest expense kung mayroong interest yun yung papasok sa operating activity so ito hindi talaga siya operating so tagtagin natin yung highlight yun so now that we, we have gathered lahat ng ating uh, cash flow operating items simply compute the total And yun na nga, ang cash flow from the operation, 21,500. So guys, hindi ko na ginawa yung ano, cash flow from financing as well as cash flow from the investing. Kasi nagawa ko na yun dun sa uh, first uh, video or prior video nito na ang topic is cash flow using the direct method. So I recommend that you watch that video kasi doon i-discuss natin paano yung ano paano ba yung process sa pagko-compute ng cash from investing and financing and at the same time para mapagkumpara mo na rin ano ba yung ikinaiba ng indirect method doon sa direct method which is the topic of that video. So I will put a link in the description box para mapag-compare mo yung differences and alin ba yung mas madali alin yung mas uh, gagamitin mo pag ikaw ay nag-prepare ng cash flow statement. So that's it for this video. Thank you.